And we're all very, very sorry to hear of the passing of uh, Colin McLeod, or Colin the Twin, as he was so popularly known. And so today we gather with the family, and we remember them all in prayer, uh, especially his widow Lorna. We also remember his daughter Fiona, along with Barry, and his son Kenneth, along with Leslie. Remember the grandchildren, Finlay and Kirsty, and we remember those who mourn the passing of our dear brother. Remember Isabel, and we remember Innes along with Anne, and we remember Anne along with John, and Eleanor along with John Doe. And again, remember all those who mourn the passing of an uncle and a granduncle, indeed a great granduncle, a cousin, and a friend to many. I'm going to read, first of all, a, a very short uh, biographical account, and it would take, <laughs> I know it would take pages to, if we were to read about all of Colin's life, but just very briefly here. Uh, Colin was born in Beach House on 18th February 1938, a twin to Callum and one of ten of a family. The pier and surrounding areas were a playground to the boys in their younger years, prior to moving to Manor Park in 1949. Colin took out his apprenticeship as a painter and decorator with Abe Langley and worked in many houses throughout the town. Colin went to the Falkland Islands in 1962 as works supervisor with Crown Agents. He couldn't escape his Highland heritage, meeting people from Lewis, Harris and Scalpy, many of whom kept contact and even visited the family home in East Kilbride. After that contract ended, he went to uh, Lusaka in Central Africa, where he met a few Lewis people, including Ian McKeever, the lawyer, who worked with Mitchell Construction. However, the highlight must have been meeting and dining with uh, President Kaunda of Zambia at the Presidential Palace. While working at the hospital in Lusaka and checking with the matron for guidance, he was amazed to see her name on the office door was the same as his own mother's, Annie MacDonald, who turns out originally came from Shawbust. What a small world. Another dinner invitation followed where he brought some Gaelic records, which provided some entertainment. Sergeant Morrison's daughter was another Lewis connection who was teaching out there at the time. On returning, he met Lorna, whom he met while she was working in Flora's hairdressers. They married in St. Columba's Gallic Church in Glasgow in June of 1969 and had two children, Kenneth and Fiona. And again, they were blessed with the arrival of two grandchildren of Finlay and Kirsty. When Kenneth was four and just prior to Fiona arriving, they moved to the new town of East Kilbride, where they both worked until 2008, when they returned home. Colin worked in the housing department and Lorna in the care service for their whole life there. He wasn't the only one of the ten to leave the Croft. Isabel was first to set up a life in Oklahoma, where she continued her nursing. Kenny joined the American Air Force, where he served for 31 years. Murdo emigrated with his family to Melbourne, Australia, and finally Innes settled in Alva to, uh, uh, to pursue a teaching career. On returning home, Colin volunteered with the men's cancer group and was also a member of the Probus and very much enjoyed the fellowship and companionship of the men there. Colin would meet with his brothers, uh, Murray and Callum, most days to catch up on local news and put the world to right also frequently visited with his sisters Flora, Anne and Eleanor at Matheson Road. Latterly, Colin's health started deteriorating, which curtailed their visits to the mainland to visit family, but still enjoyed getting out daily with Lorna locally. They enjoyed having their family visit often from East Kilbride and Old Kilpatrick. And that's a, a short uh, tribute to a, a great man, to... Uh, Colin McLeod. And of course, as we are beginning our worship here, we also are able to do so with live streams, so we welcome those of family who may also be joining 
uh, from Australia and from America. So we're going to begin our worship singing to God's praise from Psalm number 23, which is on the order of service. Psalm number 23, on the order of service. And after we sing, uh, Ian Thompson, Reverend Ian Thompson, uh, from, who is in point but was until very recently in East Kilbride and very well known to the family, uh, will lead us in prayer. So Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness, even for his own name's sake. Psalm 23, the whole psalm, we remain seated for the service. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. <clears throat> the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me Father in heaven, we seek to draw near to you at the presence of the throne of grace, thankful that it's a throne of grace that we're seeking to draw near to you at, thankful that you're the God who is willing to show mercy to sinners such as we are, and willing to accept the poor efforts that we present in our endeavor to worship you but we're thankful that we can come in and through our lord and savior jesus christ and as we come into your presence we come to acknowledge you as the god who gives life the god in whom we all live move and have our being and you're the god who has the right to take that life from us at the time of your appointment 
And we, we bow down in your presence this day, O Lord, as a result of you calling Colin from the scene of time into eternity. And we acknowledge you as the God who has the right to do this. Because the reason that we must all die is because we have all sinned against you. And we've come short of your glory. But we're thankful that as we come, as we've already said, that we come in and through the Saviour who's able to save to the uttermost. So that death will not have the final say over your people. Your people at the point of their physical death will go immediately into the presence of God to inherit what you've prepared for them from before the foundations of the world. So that when the soul leaves the body, death will not have power over it. And even later on, us, the body will be committed back to the ground out of which we were formed. We know, and this is the great hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that that body that is sown in corruption will be raised in incorruption. Sown in weakness, it will be raised in power. Sown in dishonour, it will be raised in glory. We will have glorified bodies when you come again. And we will enter into the inheritance that you've prepared for your people, a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. So that although we mourn the loss of a loved one at this time, if we inherit that inheritance, there will be no more death. There will be no more severing of relationships. There will be no more sickness that causes so much misery. All of these things will have been dealt with in such a way that your people will live in the vitality of youth forevermore because that is the gift of God, eternal life. And we rejoice in the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that when we come before you, O Lord, at times such as these, to commit the family that are grieving and who are hurt uh, more intensely than possibly the rest of the people that are affected by his death, we bring before you his widow, Lorna, who is now bereft of our lifelong partner. And we pray, O Lord, that you would be a husband to her, because you've promised to be a husband to the widows. And we ask, Lord, that you would fill the void that has now come into her experience, that she would know you as a husband, and that she would be able to commit the things that she was sharing with Colin, that she would be able to commit them to yourself. And we pray for the family, Lord. We pray for Kenneth. And we pray for Fiona, who are now bereft of a father. We ask, Lord, that you would be their father. That they would know you as their father in heaven. And that they would know that you're the father who makes provision to meet all the needs of your children. That there is sufficient grace to help them to overcome their grief at this time. We commit them to you and their partners, Barry and Leslie. We pray that you would be with them and that you would encourage them to commit all of their cares and concerns to you. We pray for the grandchildren. We pray, O oh Lord, for Finley and Kirsty, that you would make yourself known to them and that you would comfort them with the knowledge of knowing that you're the God who is concerned for families. The covenant that you've made with your people was not just for them as individuals, it was for them as a family, to their children and their children's children. So you're concerned for the families of your people, and we commit them to you as a family. We remember the siblings that are left. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort them. Isabel, Anne, 
in us. That you would uh, be with them, O Lord, and be the friend that sticks closer than any brother. We forgot Eleanor, and we're thankful that you're not like us, or though we can at times forget one another and forget their names, that you know everybody by name. And we pray, O Lord, that you would be with them as another member of their large family has been taken away from them. We pray, O Lord, that you would uh, continue to remember uh, those that are related here and abroad in Australia and America, because you're the God who's not confined to localities. You're the God who is able to be present wherever your people are, because you're the ever-present God. And you're the God who is not separated by geographical landscapes. And we know that the family can draw near to us here in the worship that we're offering up this day. But more importantly, they can draw near to you. And we could, would commit them all to your care, O oh Lord, asking that you would be pleased to meet with them that you would be pleased to administer the comfort which only you can administer. We ask that you would enter into the innermost recesses of their hearts, that you would descend to the depth of their heart, and that you would apply the healing power which only you can give. We commend them to your care. We pray for the friends, the neighbours that have gathered to pay their last respects to Colin. That this voice would be a voice that would speak to all of us, because it's a voice that will usher us all into your presence at the end of our time. So we pray, Lord, that it would make us wise. If we haven't yet laid hold of the salvation that is in Jesus Christ, that this would be a reminder to us that here we have no continuing city, and that you would enable us to seek that city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Lead us all to these ends, so that we might know that comfort, and that we might know the peace that passes all understanding. Hear our prayers and forgive us for our sins, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. two or three short readings. I know we, we sang at the beginning Psalm 23, but I'm going to read it. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in John's Gospel, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you, you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And finally, in John 14, first six verses, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, 
that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And may God bless to us these readings of his own holy word. And just one we very brief word before uh, again engage in prayer. We're going to sing uh, afterwards, in conclusion, Psalm 100. And uh, there is the theme between Psalm 23 and Psalm 100 of the shepherd and the flock, because in Psalm 100 it tells us very simply, uh, know that the Lord is God indeed, without our aid he did us make, he made us without, we had no say in it, but he made us and he has continued to look after us. We are his flock, he doth us feed, and for his sheep he doth us take. And we sang in Psalm 23 there about how uh, the Lord is our shepherd. And in his shepherding, he enables us sometimes to lie down by the green pastures. And these are great times, beside the still waters. When you see that, the imagery that's given to us there, it's, it's beautiful. Whether you were taking a photograph or you're an artist able to paint, these are the special times in life. These are the great times. And our lives often have great times. Times with family and friends and all these things. But it's not always like that. Because the psalm goes on to talk about going through death's dark veil. There are valleys, there are shadows. But the wonderful thing is that the shepherd never leaves his sheep. He has an interest and a care and our love for a sheep all the time. And we believe that the good shepherd had a love and a care for Colin uh, over the years. Colin had a great interest and love in the things of God, the things of the gospel. Colin was a man who was full of fun, always left you with a smile on your face, but he was also a serious man as well. And he had a great love, a quiet faith for his Lord and for his Saviour. But the beautiful thing is that the, the shepherd leads his sheep and he leads them all the way home. I've said it before and it's such a beautiful picture that we have at the end. It was Douglas Macmillan I first heard say it, but it's so true. Douglas, who was a shepherd and had spent many years as a shepherd before entering the ministry, and he, he was saying that uh, the last verse and he says, how goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. And he likened goodness and mercy to the shepherd's two sheepdogs that are guiding the sheep home. And what a wonderful picture that we have of God's goodness and God's mercy accompanying us every step of the way, leading us home. And again, we see in Psalm 100 that we're going to sing here that his mercy is forever sure. Isn't that great? God's mercy is always sure. In this world that's full of change, it's great to have something and someone who is foundational, who's always there, guaranteed. Even the best friends in life can let us down. But the, here is the great shepherd, the good shepherd, the great friend, who will never let us down. And as he was Colin's support and stay, uh, we... Pray that all of us today may indeed know the Good Shepherd as our Lord and our Saviour. We're just going to bow in prayer very briefly again. Lord our God, we give thanks for our time of worship together as we wait upon you. We give thanks for, for the prayer, Ian's prayer, and we give thanks for the word that we've read and the words that we've sung, your word. And we pray that these words may go down into our own soul and that we may, might be blessed by them. You are a great God, and you do great things in our lives. And even although sometimes life hurts, and sometimes we are so disappointed, sometimes our own personal lives, our worlds are thrown upside down, and yet even there we discover your grace and your mercy, your love, your goodness to us. And so we pray that that might be the experience of this family as they mourn today, Colin's passing, a man who was known and loved in this town and way beyond, indeed, in many parts of this earth and the parts of this world. 
And uh, we see how rich so many people's lives are. Sometimes there are many, although maybe many of us knew many things about Colin, even today there were things that maybe we, we didn't know. And there were many other things that we didn't know. But you know every single thing about us. Lord, again, as we heard, we pray especially for, for Lorna. And we give thanks for her, for her devotion and love and her care of uh, Colin, particularly in this last, in this last while. She, she enabled him to get around and about when, when maybe if it wasn't for her, he, he wouldn't be able to. They were such a devoted couple and a devoted family. It's a family that, that's known for their love and their devotion for one another. And so today we pray, again as we heard, we, we pray for Kenneth and uh, we pray for Fiona. We pray for Barry and for Leslie as, as they mourn. And uh, we know that they will be, that mourning will be real, it'll be keen, it'll be deep. There will be times that they will laugh and reflection. And there are times that hearts will be so sore. And there's always going to be that empty place and that silent voice. Lord, we pray that their memories will be precious ones. We pray for the grandchildren again. We pray for Finlay and we pray for Kirsty, Lord, that you will bless them. And as they reflect upon a grandfather's love and care for them and prayers for them, we pray, Lord, that you will guide them in life and that you will provide for them and that you will open doors for them and that you will indeed be their shield and their shepherd. Can we remember those who mourn in the passing of our brother? We pray for, and our brother-in-law. We pray for, for Isabel, and uh, we pray for Innes and for Anne. We pray for Anne and for John, and we pray for Elner and for John. Oh Lord, we ask that you will bless them all. It's a large family, such a well-known family. And we ask, Lord, that they will know the friend that sticks closer than a brother, that you will be with them. Each and every one of, the, of this large extended family, mourning an uncle, a granduncle, indeed a great granduncle, a cousin, a friend to so many people. But Lord, as we come under and have come under your word, we pray that we will hear your voice, that we'll be enriched by it, and that you will bless us as we will make our journey to the final resting place. Lord, as we heard there in Ian's uh, prayer of just how Wonderful the Christian hope is uh, that the grave cannot claim, even although it seems so often we say the finality of the grave it isn't. One day the graves will open and the dead will rise. O oh Lord our God, we pray then that our eyes will be fixed upon Jesus and our hope rooted and rested in, in him. Bless us and we pray and do us good cleansing us from our every sin. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. We're going to conclude our service singing from Psalm 100. Psalm 100. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with mirth his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Down to the last verse. For why? The Lord our God is good. His mercy is forever sure. His truth at all times firmly stood and shall from age to age endure. The whole psalm, Psalm 100, all people that on earth do dwell. <clears throat> all people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheer. Oh, yeah.
behalf of the family, I take this opportunity of thanking you all for coming here today. And they wish to thank uh, everyone for all the messages of support and uh, sympathy that have been expressed to them. So your presence here today is very valued and appreciated by the family. As you would also see in the back of the order of service, Lauren and the family would like to thank the staff of HDU, the cardiac nurses, community nurses, and respiratory nurse at the Western Isles Hospital, uh, also the doctors of the group practice for the diligent care of Colin over the last few years. And uh, the, afterwards, we will re take our seats again after the benediction and allow the undertakers to attend to their duties first. And then uh, you will allow the family to make their way out at, uh, on this door, the door to my left. And then we will all make our own way out. And again, if you can use uh, hand sanitizer on the way out and remember the social distancing, etc. And there will be a procession. There won't be a lift, but there will be a procession following uh, the the hearse afterwards. Let's make our way to Sandwick. So we'll stand for the benediction. Now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each one of you now and forevermore. Amen. And there's also, I forgot to intimate, there's also a cup of tea out at the, the cafe afterwards. So you're very welcome to, to join with the family there after for that.